Hey, great. Thanks, Todd. Um, welcome, everyone. Um, well, the first, <clears throat> first up is the uh, action item review. Um, Todd, could you make it a little bit bigger <laughs> so I can read it? <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Oops, that's too big. Oh, what happened? There, oh, there we go. I think I can read it now. <clears throat> So the first uh, action was for Chris and Mick to complete the README uh, blurb for the incubation. Uh, and uh, I don't think I've seen that. Chris, I think you're on. Oh, and, and Mick is on as well. So Chris or Mick, do you guys have an update on the... On hey, Chris, the, I'm just... Um, I sent you the potential readme. Do you want me to just put it in as a PR on a uh, high level? It, that's one way of doing it. Did you, if you sent me something, I didn't see it or... Um, there was a couple have... of paragraphs on the rewrite on the initial, on the introduction. Okay. Um, could you, could, could you just send it to the list? Uh, it may have been filtered out some, I don't know, I'll have to look. I don't recall seeing it though. I'll I'll um okay. I'll send it to the I'll chat. Um, Hello, this is Emmanuel from Accenture. Just connected. Hi, Emmanuel. Welcome. Okay, so if you, if you guys could send it to the list, that'd be great, and then we can close this. Um, the next was for me to move the project lifecycle to the wiki and. Uh, I didn't do it, but Arno did, so that one is done. Uh, and yep. the same with the project proposal um, uh, for the, the initial uh, age proposal that was moved to the to the wiki. So, um, so those the, those first three are done. Uh, the next one was for Dave to well, finalize the printing of the. I'm sorry. Was there a question? Yeah, I I had. Um you know, sent to the to the TSC list. Um, yeah, so we met with um, Scott yesterday. Uh, was fairly somebody needs to mute. Um, you know, overall we feel that Don's is strong. Uh, somebody's not, got their uh, doesn't have mute on. <laughs> and I don't think he was as much in the uh, so, as Don was, but we got him. We got him. Somebody who is talking to Don is 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 taking uh, over the meeting. Turn on mute. I'm going to have to go ahead and mute everyone, and then please come off mute to talk. So this is Chris Allen. Um, um, I had sent a note to the list uh, regarding the project life cycle after some discussion. Uh, I met with Mick on Monday and you know we're just talking about in general security software um, needs some additional stages and uh, you know I'm not, I'm not sure that all the different stages that you know I put in my uh, proposal are are required um, but I definitely feel like the experimental one is important um, you know when you're doing a high a, a, a hackathon or things of that nature and want to share um, ideas we need to have you know sort of a category for that which we don't and then the evaluation stage um, that uh, is basically um, you know a, I think a, an important intermediary stage where you can have it reviewed by cryptographers and security reviewers and security engineers and things of that nature that that uh, just moving from uh, you know, into mature is too fast. <laughs> um, um, so, uh, you know, I wanted to, you know, I, I don't understand how the, the, uh, the decisions are made as far as how the lifecycle document list is created. I've heard that, oh, this is the way that, that uh, people do it, but this, um, um, I'm not, uh, um, I'm not really accepting that that's the the way that people do it. So, anyhow, I posted the thing to the, my list. Uh, um, it was posted up for comments for weeks, but uh, again, I think there 
you know, for whatever reason, as far as you know, how the the, the process, there hasn't really been an open discussion on it. So uh, um, I'm just, you know, I added it to my list of something I wanted to talk about. Um, and if you know, if nobody is interested in in that evaluation, that's another another story. But I think it's worthy of of discussion. So, Chris, I, I, I mean, I think you were on the call when we approved this last week. Um, so, I mean, we can we can have further discussion. One of the things that's on my list of things to do, and it should actually be an action, is to actually start the process of the TSC defining the exit criteria for an incubation, which is maybe what you're getting at. But it's from my perspective, I, I, and I've been involved with quite a few open source initiatives that are running up under open governance and none of them go to this level of uh, uh, you know I, I, don't, I don't even know what to call it but I mean incubation and then mature and then uh, you know uh, what do we call it? I would, so a lot of it I can throw out it's the evaluation stage before mature um, the you know it takes a lot of work to do a security review, it takes a lot of work to do. The yeah, that's that's, the that's not under that's not under debate, Chris. And, okay. and, and and I said that we we're going to describe and define the process for the exit criteria. We will do that, but it's it doesn't seem to be that we have to actually change the life cycle itself in order to achieve that. So if you've got specific criteria that should be addressed, let's start discussing that. Absolutely. Absolutely, but that doesn't change the process of going from incubation to mature. If you're saying that it's a very high bar, that's fine. We can have that discussion, but I don't think we need to have you know all these little fine-grained levels of uh, you know between incubation and mature to describe. I, I don't see what value that adds. I have and again, I'm, and I will. I will. In, I will. Countless open source initiatives, and they all have incubation, they have mature, and they have deprecated or attic or other various terms that they use for the stuff that they're no longer using. So, if I can just, um, is the concern? This is a question for Chris Allen. Chris, is the concern about the labels or about the um, criteria used to advance from stage to stage? Um. It's a little bit of both because it communicates things to the community um, that, uh, you know, where sort of the intent is. Um, the, you know, one of the things about incubation is that, you know, we're going to potentially have five, six different things that are going to be incubated. Um, but we, on the other hand, we want, we have a goal of, you know, trying to bring things, choosing one for a single code base. You know, when is an incubation ready for uh, for serious review? Um, that you know, basically, you know, we've reached a point where you know uh, we really want to dive into deeply in, into that, and that's a that's a signal and a process point uh, that you know exists before production. And that's the I mean, I put in a longer <laughs> list, and I probably should not have, but the the key one is that that particular uh, phase. Something so, is there, is it, so if you go back and view the the minutes of these of the technical steering committee meetings, you'll see that one of the points that we agreed to do was to start focusing on exactly what the exit criteria was. And so, in the context of that discussion, Chris, this is you know we, we, we can we can certainly add in all the things that you're talking about as as a as a function of the exit criteria from incubation to mature, but. I don't think that it necessarily abrogates exactly what was in the life cycle proposal in the first place. There's just the, so, the three pages are, are are pretty clear. Everybody, you know, pretty much understands what these things mean. And I think we should move on. So, I mean, you know, we you know, what we can do is we can set up a small subgroup that starts focusing on the exit criteria and you're more than happy, you know, you're more than welcome to participate in that as is anybody. And Chris, if it, can I can I have a moment? Yep. Uh, you know, I, I there there's some confusion. Several people have talked to me. The, the just just to be really clear here, this is going to sound uh, mildly repetitive, but 
this is an open source project, right? There, there were five weeks of discussion around the, the, this topic. Everybody's welcome to participate. People did participate. If you don't feel like you can, you can. It's an open source project. And so, um, you know, saying things like there's no open discussion, we had five weeks of open discussion. It's a community. And so you have you, you the participants. Uh, you know, I'm from the Linux Foundation. I sit on a lot of the projects. You the participants have to participate, and, and participating ex post facto doesn't help. So if the discussion's going on, you have to be engaged in that discussion while it's going on. Uh, and once decisions are made, you have to move on. The, com, coming back and bringing it up, the, you know, it, it, it's not like anybody's excluded from those discussions. Everybody's invited in. There's a hundred people on the call, and, and and all hundred are welcome to comment. So I, I just, it, 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 I think there's a bit of an understanding, you know, or a lack of understanding here that you know, the the TSC call is the discussion, and when when the discussion's over, the discussion's over because the TSC has made a decision. Right. Well, but the discussion can happen in Slack and on the mailing list, and yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. But it's all part of that whole community. Right. So, so let's 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 move on with you know just wrap up the action item review because I'd like to get to the Intel proposal. Um, so quickly, so Dave was going to finalize the wording of the white paper. Obviously, that means Dave and the working group, but um, and get it in front of the board to review. Um, I, I, I take it that since the white paper is not finished, this hasn't been done. That's fine. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, Chris, um, we uh, I think we were specifically talking about the, the section of the white paper that made reference to a permission versus uh, a permission list type, and we did we did update that section. Um, so, what we're planning to do, and I can cover this when we get when we get to the working group uh, update, but basically, you know, we're going to have our first draft, draft 01 or whatever, uh, published next uh, next Wednesday, and then mm -hmm. I think what we'd like to do is show that first draft and then specifically highlight that one section because that's just the one, we, what we were talking about last week was just kind of, we wanted to zoom in there and just make sure that they're comfortable say, with how we're describing uh, a non-permission use case as well. That's that okay. was the point. All right. Thank you for the clarification, Todd. If you wouldn't mind just uh, clarifying that that action item, and, and we'll track it. Will do. Um, and then I, I take it you updated the. Did you update the minutes for the work group? Yep. Yep. So I was able to uh, follow <laughs> Patrick's uh, format, and uh, and so now if you click on the white paper working group, you'll see a member section, and then. Uh, you know, an entry for each week, each weekly uh, mini meeting minutes, um, and th that's in there. Okay, thank you. Um, excellent. So we can close that one. Um, Chris Allen, Christopher Allen, rather, um, uh, Canvas. Everybody interested in the identity subgroup, um, and. Uh, Find out if they want to list or just use Slack. Chris, were, Chris, were we able to um, close on that? Um, that's going. That's a. Uh, we're having the meeting on Friday um, at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 p.m. 11 a.m. Um, and that is the first agenda item for the meeting. There are 14 people that have said that they want to participate in that discussion. Excellent. Um, uh, also, you know, part of it is that we're not absolutely sure, um, you know, should this be a separate group or or whatever. So, you know, this is just a, you know a first meeting to to sort of canvas what it is that you know pe why people are interested in the topic and uh, what we want to try to do. It could be that it you know um, uh, we instead roll into architecture or or requirements. It just it just was a unique area. Okay, great. So we'll, we'll just track this one, but thanks. And sounds like there's a lot of good progress on the identity group. Um, uh, Todd, you want to update us? Whoops, just lost the agenda. You want to just update us on the two doodle polls and thinking about the, the, the tooling face-to-face -to -face and, um, and the next technical face-to-face? -face? Yep, 
Uh, sure thing. So in terms of the technical face-to-face, -face, there have been about 20 people that have responded. Um, the most likely date is looking like the Thursday and Friday after the consensus conference in New York, uh, though the following week looks really strong as well. Um, I would like to see uh, a few more people respond to the Doodle poll. Uh, so we'll leave this open uh, for about another day or so, so the people on this call uh, and the people that see the TSC minutes have a chance to respond, uh, and then we'll close on it from that point. But along those lines, uh, if anyone in New York City or, you know, in the East Coast have space that they'd be willing to offer up for this to hold the face-to-face, -face, definitely get in touch with us and we'll we'll be reaching out as well. And then on the other topic for the tooling face-to-face, only a couple people have responded at this point. Uh, five people have responded, and three of those people are not available at any of the times that were proposed. So I suspect <laughs> we're going to either need to look for um, maybe, a different time maybe, frame. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, well, maybe what, it, it, since it, 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 I mean, we're starting to sort of run the calendar here, maybe the things, although I did want to be able to sort of start this, maybe we just don't need a face to face and we just have to have a two to three hour call. Yep. Um, to sort through the, um, you know, the, the various tooling needs. I, I started to put together a little bit of a list. Um, I need to focus a little bit more on that maybe later today. Um, and um, I can't remember what I was doing. Was I doing, I'll have to go back and look where I was doing that, whether it was a wiki or other, uh, maybe it was just in Slack. Um, and, and have other people sort of chime in with some thoughts, but um, uh, you know, if a face-to-face -face is not in the cards, that that's probably fine. Uh, it saves a little bit of budget for travel and so forth, and we can just have a two to three hour call in, in the next week or so. All right, that sounds um, good. Yeah. So why don't I work with you and Stephen and and see if we can't figure out a time for a call and get that out to the list, and anybody can dial in if they like. So actually, actually for me to, to follow up with you and Steve. And, and Chris, to that end, there's a page on the wiki that uh, I'm logging the, I'm logging all of the meetings on. It's mm -hmm. uh, Hyperledger, Hyperledger wiki, and down in the bottom you'll see a list of uh, a, a calendar link. Uh, if, if I've missed any on here, just send them over to me in Slack or wherever else. I have the Recurring meetings, the working group meetings, and the meeting proposals um, uh, up there right now, including the doodle links. And as they become meetings, I'll, I'll post them up here. And this should be a good way to get them uh, out and easily in hand. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent. This is Ram. Uh, looks like I dialed in just uh, around the time when you were talking about the work group updates. I uh, just wanted to mention that uh, you know we are meeting the architecture work group. Um, about uh, nine, ten people were interested, and about uh, six, seven people have confirmed that they will be able to attend uh, tomorrow. Based on the Google uh, poll and the okay, that's a little premature. We we're just actually just going through the action items, but that's <laughs> thank you, thank you, Ram. Um, uh, oh, you're okay. going through the action items. Sorry. Yeah, you're just cleaning up the action items, right? So, and 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 uh, Philip was just telling how he had created a calendar. I think Chris Chris Allen had uh, suggested a calendar. Um, okay. I think he thought it was a great idea. So Philip just followed through with that. He was just identifying that he's posted the the meeting times and so forth. So, um, uh, any 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 proposed or or meetings that aren't listed in the calendar, please get with Philip and and he'll add them. Um, okay, so I think next up on the agenda, I lost my, here we go, uh, is the proposal from uh, Intel, um, and um, is there a link to it? I'm sorry. sorry, before we get into it, before we get into it, can I ask you a question? Can I ask a question of Chris Ferris? This is Jatinder, Bali from Citigroup. Go ahead, I'm here. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, if there are, I would just want to get your answer. If there are more than one very strong proposal for a hyperledger, are you considering, uh, just like we have different uh, versions of flavors of Linux, are you considering having two different uh, fabrics, or 
would you not accept that and just say one has to, um, you know, it has to be the best of both worlds and only one uh, one fabric would be accepted? So uh, let, let me see if I can address this. So um, I think it's a good question. Thank you. Um, and, and the answer is I don't, I don't really know. I think, again, you know, as Philip said, this is really, this is a community we have to, you know, this is something that we as a community have to decide. This is not up to me or anybody, any individual. Uh, it's not up to the board. It's up to collectively the TSC ultimately um, to make this decision. But um, here, here's my take. You know, here's, here's what I'm thinking. Um, and, and again, I don't want to, you know, take away the, I think this proposal is, is fine, but um, I'm, uh, you know, I would like to see that, you know, this group come out with a thing and a thing that can be used in multiple flavors, right? So, you know, we talked about the scope initially and how we were focusing on, you know, the very lowest layer, the sort of the, uh, the core, um, not on building out a specific framework for banking or a supply chain or anything else. And that from that core, you know, the analog of the Linux kernel that you could have multiple things, multiple flavors, multiple platforms that may compete or not, um, or, or that may be, you know, different domains and so forth. Um, that's, that's what I would personally, me personally, this is not me or it's not IBM. It's not the TSC. This is just me personally would like to see us drive towards an answer that, you know, the world, can 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 use. I know others, um, uh, ha, you know, think that there will be many blockchains, and I think that's true. Um, but I also think that at the core, there really don't necessarily need to be multiple, um, uh, you know, identity managers and multiple, uh, you know, databases and multiple. I mean, there may be different consensus modules, but I would hope that we could have a framework that could allow for pluggable consensus. Um, and, and, and then, you know, that we don't necessarily need to have multiple approaches for how we deal with smart contracts, but we may have different smart contract languages. Like we may have Hopper and we may have, you know, I don't know, Solidity or, you know, the, the Go, uh, you know, version that, that was contributed from IBM initially and so forth. Um, I would hope that we had a number of different approaches for that. But those are just core pieces, and that you can then assemble those core pieces, <clears throat> which we would, you know, strive to harden and so forth, just like they've done with the Linux kernel, but that would leave room for a, a market and a whole ecosystem of opportunity to grow that was built from that from that kernel. So that's my personal vision. Um, you know, we, we're going to discuss the the Intel proposal, and you know. Uh, as we discussed Pat in the past, uh, we can have multiple proposals. And I don't necessarily, you know, I, I would hope that as we uh, uh, consider this proposal and, and potentially approve it, that we also are starting to think about, and I, I think it, what is hinted at in this proposal is how we can take some of the great ideas from all the different incubation proposals that we may or may not see and come out with something that we can all uh, yeah, that that we've collaborated on together, um, and and that we think addresses the you know the set of use cases and requirements that the requirements team is working on and so forth. Does that make sense? Uh, yes, yes, definitely makes sense. Right. Uh, when I wake up on Monday morning, I love the Intel proposal. Tuesday, I go back on IBM proposal. I love that one. It's I mean, there's so many things in both and many other proposals, I mean, many other uh, ledgers, right? That uh, we need, at least you know uh, your answer was great, right? Let's if it has got uh, these modules and then we can plug and play these modules, that would be fantastic. Yeah. Yes, thank you. But you know, um, so let's let's turn this over to to Mick and, and Patrick to um, to present and um, and let's have a, a healthy discussion. So Mick, Patrick. Okay, thank you. This is Patrick Holmes from uh, Intel. Can you see the screen? Okay. Uh, yep. Thank you. Okay, I am uh, you. You in the agenda. You had a link to this document. I'm just displaying this the same document that uh, the link was to. 
uh, again, Patrick Holmes Intel. Um, this is a hyperledger improvement uh, proposal. Um, it is co-sponsored by Mick Bowman at Intel Corporation and Richard Gendel Brown at R3. And uh, so the content came from, from both. Um, I'm not going to read this word for word. I assume that's okay. I'll just walk, walk through it. So the abstract. So the proposal is to accept the Intel distributed ledger into incubation, uh, incubation status, and uh, we're proposing the name Sawtooth Lake, and then collaborate with others to improve the project, uh, then formally evaluate it as uh, one of the foundational platforms under uh, the Hyperledger umbrella. The motivation uh, is, uh, uh, well, first we think it has some compelling features, right? No, most notable is the, uh, we've decoupled the ledger from the transactions. The second is the concept of transaction families, right? So we have, um, it's very extensible, very pluggable with different uh, data models and, and transaction semantics. So very extensible. And then we've also uh, got the pluggable consensus, which enables different consensus protocols, which would uh, support both permissioned and non -perm permission networks. So we believe these are um, compelling features. They make it uh, worthy of consideration, eventual evaluation once we have evaluation criteria. Um, and we think um, having multiple code bases uh, facilitates a deeper discussion of the requirements and the vision. And uh, we can explore and test different ones, different assumptions that underpin each of these designs. Uh, the members, the observers, the users could develop a better understanding of uh, the problems at each approach. And, and maybe come up with some some shared uh, requirements and uh, yeah. But there are also improvements to be made to all of the code bases. And while we figure out the use cases, the requirements, the evaluation criteria, we'd like to collaborate with others, um, smart, passionate developer, developers from uh, both the hyperledger companies and the public, uh, as best way to improve the software. So today we're proposing that uh, this move into incubation status. We have several um, tasks, uh, tasks in mind that we'd like to collaborate on. Um, and and we've li I've listed several here. Right? We need to continue to develop the, uh, the artifacts, uh, develop tutorials for developing transaction families, develop some transaction families, um, uh, extend our endpoint registry uh, transaction families to to work with permission services, identity, uh, authentication, and and uh, permissions. Um, I'll go permission granularity from uh, permission nodes. Right now, uh, they're not uh, permission, but they could be extended. Develop a blockchain explorer, a network explorer, etc. The effort uh, depends on many factors, so I can't tell you I didn't size the effort to do all these things. It really depends on the community involvement. Intel is committing several full-time engineering resources to ensure the success. Uh, the initial maintainers would be myself and uh, Sean Amundsen at uh, Intel. We are open to having other maintainers um, once they've made some significant contributions and demonstrated a good understanding of the code. And uh, other Hyperledger project members have indicated to us they're evaluating the code and uh, they've expressed interest. Now, um, the how-to can change, but the idea is that we create a single repository within the Hyperledger organization named Sawtooth Lake. And that repo would have a readme that would point out to another uh, GitHub organization uh, such as uh, Sawtooth Lake, which would hold multiple repositories containing the project. Uh, we think that's a better uh, approach than trying to combine all of the repositories into a single one. We also don't want to take more than one in the, uh, in the Hyperledger organization. And in terms of closure, we'd work to continue on this project until it graduates uh, to a mature status or we make some other decision. Um, by that time, we think there'd be a more robust system for prioritizing managing uh, improvement requests. That is the um, proposal. Thanks, Patrick. Um, any any comments, thoughts, questions for Mick or Patrick?
and at all. Or is it's 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 Richard here is a comment from me as a as a as a co-sponsor of this. Um, just to to echo some of what what Nick said, um, I was particularly pleased to to see this this contribution because um, it ties, I think, directly to a point that I and others have made that um, there are. There are many architectures we should be exploring, and this allows us to to do it within if if, if the incubation is is approved, allows us to do it in the context of um, of, of the foundation. And in particular, um, looking at some of the code and some of the design docs, my sense is the Intel approach makes some, as well as having a different design, it makes some very different assumptions about the problems it's trying to solve and um, and how it might be used. Um, and I figured that could be quite a useful way to to um, to help us as as a as a group get to a much clearer idea of, of what problem or problem problems we're trying to solve. Um, so, um, so I hope this is, is one of many um, new proposals um, for incubation. Hey, um, uh, hey uh, Chris, this is Murali from uh, DDCC. So this is a question for Patrick. So I saw several things being mentioned there in terms of, you know, data explorer and, you know, uh, block explorer and other things. I just want to confirm. I think the f wouldn't the first step be as to how to integrate the Intel platform with the you know with the OBC or the other code bases. You know how does interface? How does this interface with you know the other two things that we have? That would be the first step, correct? Uh, not necessarily, right? I, I don't. I think it would be a mistake to rush to try and integrate, uh, you know, as many different solutions as possible. I think we could wind up with a Frankenstein of a, of a system. Uh, there are different um, languages, uh, different architectures. I, I think it would be best to understand the different approaches, uh, the different architectural approaches, the pros and cons of each, uh, and do that first, right? As well as um, con continue. Developing the the requirements, the architecture, the white paper, right, so we understand what it is we're looking for. Okay, because I was going based off Chris' comment that we want to, you know, develop this common framework or you know fabric which will allow that pluggability that you know other things could be added. So you're saying this is you know we'll just independently so evaluate first. And then think about it later. So let me let me try a slightly different version of this, which is um, the OBC code base takes a very starts from a kind of permissioned um, uh, PBFT based consensus kind of model, um, and then is trying to move towards um, uh, other usages. Uh, the Intel chain starts from a more open permissionless model and is moving towards the permission spaces. Um, and I think the two architectures will, at, at worst, inform us about what the potential design space is for the final solution, whatever that is. Um, uh, and, and, and if there are fundamental differences between the two of them, um, that's also useful to know because that that identifies a couple of different optimization points. You know, we don't we don't have one database. We have structured database and the non-structured database, or a SQL and NoSQL database, because they serve different purposes. We try to make them as common as possible, um, and and try to build libraries that allow us to to move back and forth between them. Um, but they are different optimization points. So, um, I, I I second. Chris on the on the ideal is to come out with you know a single set of building blocks that can be used to put together. Um, I think the process in getting there and, and in particular having a plurality of approaches allows us to bring uh, thinking from different sides um, to this problem as we sort of figure out what those components are. Um, you know, I will say personally, you know, I don't. I don't think there needs to be just one identity service. I think that identity is one of those things that we have historically found to be decentralized. Um, this will give us an opportunity to actually do some exploration into um, those kinds of assertions about what works and what doesn't work. Thanks, Mick. So, um, 
other other questions? I was just trying to chase the chat, but it seems like this user interface doesn't like me to go back far enough because then as soon as somebody types it, it tells me what the latest thing is. So, um, were there? Chris, there was a, there was one question in case everybody's not following the, the chat. I forget who it was who asked. Um, somebody asked me, um, just Richard here, how um, Sawtooth Lake from Intel and, and Corda from R three. Um, relate, are they the same thing, um, you know, what's the relationship? The point I clarified in the chat is that they are they are separate and different, and in particular they make quite different assumptions, of, I think, about the, 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 the problem spaces to which they'll be put and the, um, and, the, um, and the design that's needed as a result. And it's actually precisely for that reason that I was so keen to sponsor it, because it does come from a very different, um, different way of thinking and a different problem space, so it adds to the range of options and the and then the range of thinking from which we can all, all, all draw and learn. Um, so, but just to clarify, um, Corda, which um, we announced last week and is is, is still under development, um, is is separate. Um, and as that matures a bit further, um, that it, it, it's, it's at that point where we will be uh, releasing the source. Um, but hopefully, that clears that up. Okay. Thanks, Richard. So, I, let, let me let me just ask generally the the community here. Um, you know, as I mentioned, and, and, and I think as Mick, as, as you alluded, you know, these, these environments can inform one another, and, and I hope they do. Um, the question that I have, though, is how? How does that happen? Um, and, and how shall we, as a, a community, how shall this TSC sort of um, set things up so that we are encouraging, you know, the sawtooth like chocolate to get into the fabric, sure. peanut butter, or whatever. I mean, what, what, I mean, th this is, this is my, my concern and my, my fear is that if we, and, and again, I'm, I'm not saying that I, I, I don't support this. I do support, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly supportive of, of this notion, but I'm concerned that if we go off and develop um, Sawtooth Lake independent of the, uh, you know, the, the fabric uh, proposal that we approved the previous week, uh, or two weeks ago, I should say, um, that they become independent things with um, and, and there's not a whole lot of cross-pollination. That's, that's a little bit of what I'm concerned about, and I'd like to have, uh, you know, I'd like to figure out how we can, um, uh, you know, work towards getting some of that informed, um, uh, you know, cross-pollination, and, and, and getting towards a, a process for how do we you know how do we, how do we take these forward? Whether we work them in parallel, you know, I, I I'm, I'm so Christopher. Um, this is Chris Allen. Um, I I'm I'm really looking forward to doing exactly what you're talking about. I think uh, you know in the 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 week that I've had a chance to look at Sawtooth Lake, um, you know, it addre We had some questions from the. Uh, that you know emerged as part of the Hyperledger hackathon about um, you know how exactly to uh, you know define some lines between uh, the consensus layer and the business logic layer and uh, you know their tendermint which is a, a another group that has you know had some ideas in that space but we weren't quite comfortable uh, completely with that, and I thought Intel did a good job uh, in that area. So, um, you know, one of the things that this can lead potentially to is things like, you know, OVC containers that are on top of, you know, a standard, uh, you know, uh, architecture that underneath can be, you know, Sawtooth's Poet or uh, you know, a, a, a proof of work or a permission PBFT. Uh, you know, and and uh, you know, it's it seemed like a a a definite improvement in that area. So, I'm I'm looking forward to you know other looking at some other uh, architectures as well for where um, you know they've got something that is uh, you know innovative that really does cross. 
um, you know, all the different uh, use cases and, uh, and, and um, you know, drive things forward. So I, I'm hoping that there will be more, a few more incubations, and I'm very happy with uh, the Sawtooth Lake um, proposal. Yeah, so I, again, I'm, and, and thank, thanks, thank you for that, Christopher. I, I you know, and, and again, I, I'm, I agree very much that there is much that we can each learn from one another. And again, what I'm looking for more is a sort of thought process on how we make that happen. And I don't know, maybe we, we look at the next hackathon and, you know, and, and we, we basically do a, a bit of musical chairs <laughs> or something and, and, uh, you know, have the LBC guys hacking on the, the Sawtooth Lake and vice versa. I, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm just sort of throwing that out. But I, I mean, I think we need to, I think collectively as a, as a, as a group, we need to figure out how we turn this into something that is collaborative and, and, and engaging as opposed to turning it into a bake-off because I don't think a bake-off is a healthy situation. Chris, I, I think Hi, it's Chris. a very good. Go ahead. Hi, Chris. This is Ram. Um, I, I think is a. Uh, first of all, I think uh, having um, a, a diverse set of uh, solutions being brought here is, I think, a very good thing for the long-term success of uh, this effort. And so, you know, I'm glad to see uh, uh, the Intel contribution and uh, especially the um, you know, the kind of uh, different approach that they have taken. Um, so in, with regard to, uh, you know, the overall approach, uh, you know, um, one of the reasons I've been kind of saying that, uh, you know, discussions around the use cases, requirements leading up to, um, uh, you know, a healthy debate on the architectural options, uh, in the architecture work group uh, is that you know it gives us a forum if you will to have uh, somewhat of a top down approach um, uh, which we can then say hey you know from the bottom up if there are contributions uh, how can we evolve to a more at least a unified uh, framework if you will and uh, I think it's very desirable to have um, as much of uh, of a unified framework as we can achieve and if um, we can use, uh, you know, that kind of top-down discussion uh, to say, hey, what is, what are the pros and cons of the different approaches? Uh, what are the, um, um, if you, if you will, if you have to divide the solution space into kind of uh, different options, um, how do we want to kind of do that in a uh, in a somewhat unified and thoughtful way? Uh, so I'm viewing that approach as the way where we can. Um, use those, uh, you know, those discussions to come up with a unified framework. Now, whether we will end up with one ideal architecture, um, you know, that's an aspirational goal uh, as far as I'm concerned, but I think uh, we ought to try for it. Hi, this, this, is, this is Dave. Um, so, you know, I could, I could definitely envision over the course of the next six months, six or seven or eight new blockchain fabrics being proposed to come under the Linux Foundation Hyperledger project umbrella. And are we going to, I mean, this isn't specific to, to you know, mixed proposal, which again, I, I read through it, it looks great, I like it a lot, but are we gonna let every single proposal come in and and live there? Or is there gonna be some kind of criteria that we're going to used to assess which ones we do want and which ones we, we won't. I mean, you know, what's what's preventing us to have, you know, Eris and Tendermint or maybe even Corda <laughs> um, be proposed and then also uh, come in there. And I guess the, the, the risk there is, maybe this isn't a risk at all, but maybe it's an issue, is if, if our attention gets spread out across lots of different uh, things, then you know, we may not make enough progress on any one of them, or may, maybe it's a situation where, yeah, let's go ahead, let them all come in, and then we'll just see which one gets the, the larger development development community and and moves forward the fastest. Um, but, you know, it, like I said, I think there's lots of potential future uh, fabrics that I think are gonna be proposed. I think if 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 I was building a brand new blockchain, I would like 
and I wanted to see it open source, I'd like it to be under the Linux Foundation in this as well. Um, so, you know, we we, need, we should be thinking ahead and and uh, deciding, you know, how we're going to make these evaluations, which ones we actually do want to incubate, um, because of the, you know the timing and everything. You know, at what point do we say, okay, we've we've seen enough, we've considered enough, and, and maybe it's driven out of use cases and requirements, but um, you know, I think there's going to be more coming. So, Dave, if I can just um uh, you know, I think the the earlier discussion is actually very relevant to what we were talking about, which is the the kind of exit criteria. Um, you know, do we put the do we put the filter on projects that are coming into incubation, or do we work hard on identifying what the set of exit criteria is um, for for what comes out? Um, foster ideas, and 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 that does change a little bit of our our. Sort of notion of what incubation and mature is, um, but I, I I I will agree completely with you that you know one of the things that does point out is is that we don't have um, uh, a, a sufficiently mature set of um, requirements or other criteria that help us kind of filter through these things. Um, so I agree. Hey, um, uh, this is Morali from DDCC. I think, like, this is my opinion. I think we should all aim for a common fabric. You know, like Chris said, if we, if everybody starts proposing, then we're all bifurcated. Our resources will all be distributed. If we all work towards a common fabric, and that common fabric, fabric could be, you know, we can take much of it from Intel, or if we have to break down the components within the OBC or DAH or whatever it is, right? But I think the co the aim should be developing this common fabric. Again, this is, you know, this is my opinion. Thanks, Marley. Other thoughts, comments? There's more chat. Find increasingly hard to track. Yeah, I, I think so this, is, this is Chris. I mean, I think this is sort of the root of why, you know, there were some questions in the last two calls um, regarding the, you know, the initial incubation, which we, which is we didn't have that, uh, you know, enough requirements and architecture things. Uh, that some of us were, you know, uncomfortable with the the incubation status uh, because we felt like, gosh, that means that thus that means that has to be the base fabric, and we were basically told, no, it isn't the the you know necessarily the base fabric, and uh, uh, that there will be multiple uh, incubations, and now we're kind of you know coming back and going, well, no, well, we want to have a single fabric, and that and thus those things that are in incubation have to be. Uh, or you know uh, have to be already in it, and and uh, uh, so it, you know we're. I still come back to I mean whether or not it's through the life cycle or not, it, it's feeling like we're missing a couple of stages, which was kind of my opening argument in the beginning that there is an evaluation stage that is that is uh, you know missing here either before going to incubation or out of incubation into. Um, uh, you know, to uh, mature. Um, so I don't know. Um, <laughs> can, can yeah, I you think. Guys, can you hear me? Sharon, oh. This is Sharon from IBM. You know, um, Ben's not on the phone today, but I do agree that we need to have a common fabric. And I I believe pretty strongly, as I know, you know, the rest of my constituents here agree. We need to get bring in the best pieces. And there's a lot of innovation in the industry, right? And we should be bringing these pieces together. So I want to make sure that whatever we do, right, we're looking at all the pieces coming in, bringing the best of the best and the best innovations together. But I also agree we've got to make sure we get the requirements down so we're all headed to the right goal. And and, and uh, uh, this is Morali from DDCC. And maybe Intel proposing this is that opportunity, right, of identifying, you know, what is the fabric from the Intel side, you know, what is the fabric from the OBC, what is the fabric 
that DAH has, right? And what are those? Can we pick and choose the best elements? Can they interoperate? Right? Maybe this is the opportunity for us, you know, this HIP will allow us to do that, go through that process. Yeah, and it, it's almost like this is why I really liked the face-to-face -face that we had, the hackathon, because I felt like, um, good or bad, the DAH pieces and the IBM pieces started to come together, where we're trying to bring the pieces together, and then maybe we need to do that here. What what pieces do we need to pull together from the two proposals together to figure out what's the best of the best and how do we move forward, right? And then from the third proposal that comes forward, same thing, right? Yeah. Uh, this is Hart here. I agree with this 100%. Um, I'm a big fan of sort of the modular architecture and plug and play and extensibility. Um, and I think, you know, sort of, you know, the more proposals we have, the merrier. We just need to have some way of dealing with fragmentation and some way to try to streamline things uh, so that we avoid sort of one tenth of the people working on, you know, 10 different proposals. Hey, uh, hey, Chris, you know, this is Morali. You know, I can volunteer to, again, pull this team from Intel and IBM and DAH, right, to understand the fabric across all the three and, you know, see if there is something, if, you know, before getting into the code level, understand their architectures of each of those fabrics and see, you know, how things can work together, right? if that makes sense for the rest of the group. So um, if I can just jump in here, one of the things that, that I think is already starting to happen in the working groups that I'm participating in is um, that the, the different approaches are leading to some really nice generalizations. Um, so at least in the white paper group, and I know in, in some of the discussions um, leading up to um, the architecture group, we'll see how that how that proceeds. And certainly from what I'm seeing built out in the requirements use case groups. Um, it, it, so um, I, I think was it Sharon that was talking earlier? I, you know, I, I, again, I think that's that is our our ultimate goal is to identify those pieces um, and to move there as quickly as possible. Uh, I think it's also useful for us to. Um, encourage a couple of different viewpoints um, that bring and apply tension to the architectural decisions that we've made to help us understand the spectrum of what those building blocks need to be. Um, that is, you know, having one code base means that we come up with a really nice set of one set of blocks which solves that one problem. Um, so I, I, I think, um, I think Mike was was saying in the chat earlier just about you know that that the filter can be uh, it, not at the incubation but as it comes out of incubation and among the 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 I think set of criteria are uh, breadth of adoption, breadth of use, generality, appropriateness, um, all of those kind of criteria of what constitutes the best building blocks. Thanks, Mick. I, I, you know, I, I, I tend to agree uh, very much, um, and you know, I, I think that you know it's our job to figure out how to encourage that, right? Encourage that output, um, and you know, the thing that I'm very encouraged by is that um, you know this discussion is. Is all about that, so that you know, that makes me happy, um, because. Uh, but but again, I think <clears throat> you know the devil's in the details, as they say, right? Um, so uh, I uh, here, here here's what I would suggest. Let's um, let, let's take a vote on this. Unless Mick, you you guys want to let people think about this for a week or so, um, but if you're interested in having in calling for a vote, I, I can certainly you know, start that process. 
Um, but then let's, you know, let, let's take the next step of formally pulling together, you know, the, the group that we talked about doing. And, uh, oh, is it hard to hear me? Can you hear? I can hear you, Chris. Okay. Um, uh, let's pull together the group that's going to sort of noodle on the whole exit cr criteria perspective. And then, you know, let's also start thinking and discussing in Slack and the mailing list about just how, you know, different ideas about how we can sort of work to encourage the cross-team collaboration that I think is going to be necessary to achieve what we've been discussing this morning. Um, again, I'm, I'm, I'm very encouraged, but um, again, the devil's always in the details. And I guess I would like to call for a vote if we're, I mean, if we're in a situation to do that. And and again, I don't, I don't see the incubation projects necessarily being bound to an answer to how we get to the end. Yeah. Um, uh, I think that the the takeaway and, and and in many ways what I like about the fact that we have two is is that it's forcing us to start answering some of these questions about how we get there and um, and what those criteria are. So. Yep, I agree. So uh, Mick is calling for a vote. Can I get a second? Sorry, I was unmuted. I'll second that. <laughs> uh, Todd, do you want to call roll? Sure thing. I'll just walk through quickly. Uh, Emmanuel? Manual you have to come up mute if you're on mute. I think Todd muted everybody at one point this morning. All right, we'll come back to Manual. Stan? Yes. All right. Uh, Tomas? Yes. Stefan? Stefan, you may need to come off mute. All right, we'll come back to Stefan in a second. Parda? Parda? Yes. All right, thank you. Uh, Hart? Yes. All right. And Chris? And Dave? Dave? Uh, you know, I'll say yes, but I think at some point we do need to draw a line in the sand and uh, and talk about how we're going to approach the next ones <laughs> that are going to be proposed. All right. Uh, and then just going back quickly, Stefan. Yes. All right. And then lastly, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, are you on the line still? All right, Chris, that was uh, nine of the ten uh, that were on the call at the start. Uh, I think we may have lost Emmanuel at some point. Okay. Thanks. Um, all right, so we have uh, an approval. Um, thanks, everyone. Uh, Thank you. So I guess the action for Patrick would be to um, set up the, the repo and so forth. And, right. and to me to start the discussion, I think, um, would, would people be interested in having an off-cycle call, if you will, an ad hoc call to talk about the sort of the, the exit and, and potentially entrance criteria, as David was suggesting? Isn't, to a certain extent, that's what the requirements group, which is meeting on Monday, and architecture group, which is meeting tomorrow, um, kind of beginning to establish? Um, I think the requirements are a an aspect of the criteria, I don't think they're exclusive. 
I think there are other things like, um, you know, many organizations, ma many open source projects require, uh, you know, take Apache, for instance. So you have to demonstrate a diversity of contribution and participation, collaboration in order to exit incubation. So it can't just be a single vendor thing. Um, and I think there are going to be other aspects, um, you know, the sort of the non-functionals that are, are going to be applied as well. And um, uh, so, so again, I think there's a, a broad set of things that we need to consider um, as part of this process. And I don't think it'll be all articulated in requirements. Again, this isn't waterfall, but um, I I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm so I agree with you. I'm also concerned about the number of meetings. <laughs> so well, if, uh, I mean, you know, we could, we could, we could, you know, I mean, I, I, I don't disagree, um, uh, but we do have, you know, some some work before us. Um, you know, we could wait until next week, but um, that doesn't get us moving the ball. I'd like to move the ball. We can have the discussion in Slack or mailing, you know, on the mailing list. Um, and, and try and get some of that out of the way. Uh, you know, that's that's an option before us. I'm asking, basically, if if people are interested in having a, an ad hoc call early next week to start discussing some of this and start working on building a, a formal proposal. In def deafening silence. Uh, does that mean nobody wants to do that? <laughs> I think it's a good idea, Chris. Um, you know, I'm just myself. My calendar is just book solid next week, mm -hmm. and uh, I just don't have time personally. But I agree with you that it, it should happen. All right, then, then why don't we do this? Why don't we take it to Slack and start the discussion there, and see if we can't. Um, you know, start work on maybe a Google Doc or something that are, starts to form our thoughts around that. Um, all right, we'll try it that way. Um, okay, uh, thanks, Patrick. Um, and as I mentioned, Todd, so, so Patrick has an action to get the repo and I have an action to start the uh, the discussion on the criteria. Um, uh, next up is the work group readouts, status updates. <clears throat> Patrick, you're up again. I'm up again, okay. Um, the requirements team uh, meetings are going to be held every Monday from 8 to 9 Pacific time. Um, the, the details, uh, the meeting details will be announced today on every possible channel I can I can think of, so there's no uh, confusion. Uh, there was no meeting this week while we were polling for the preferred daytime. Uh, obviously, we could have had one. I, I apologize for that. We do have an agenda for Monday's meeting, uh, which I discussed last time. Uh, Primrose uh, from Accenture is going to go through the counterfeit drug use case. Um, the progress is we uh, discussed last week we're going to do top-down. Uh, user stories, but we also thought we should do bottom up, and we now have an outline for our requirements document. It's just a start, but at least we've got something, and um, so we'll go from there. That's okay. it. Thank you, uh, Ron. You gave an update earlier, but you want to maybe just quickly repeat what you said earlier, so that everybody who may not have been on at the time gets a. Ram, you may be on mute. Or he may have had to leave. I think he had to leave. Sorry, I'm here. It's the mute, the multiple mutes. <laughs> yes. Uh, so just, just to uh, recap what I said earlier, the, the architecture work group uh, is going to meet tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific. Um, um, I think I've sent the, sent the WebEx to the folks directly uh, who responded in, uh, as well as on Slack and on the email list. Uh, uh, please do join uh, if you're interested. Um, the initial meeting is just uh, to go through the framework, uh, um, you know, um, in, in terms of what communication channels we want to use, how frequently we want to meet, um, what are the tools we want to uh, uh, use, and also kind of uh, uh, get 
get people's input on the work plan? Should we wait for the requirement work groups to kind of be at least ready with their first set of requirements, or should we plunge ahead with the well-known architectural choices in front of us, so forth? So uh, looking forward to getting started this week. Great. Thank you, Ram. And Dave? Hi. Uh, yes. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, you know, we have our our minutes posted up on the wiki. We met yesterday. Um, we're, we're meeting it weekly on Wednesdays, um, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, we had a every full attendance. Everyone attended, and they're right smack on time. Thanks, everyone. Um, we, we, you know, we kind of kicked off meeting, reviewing the wiki page structure, going over our prior minutes. Um, you know, we we discussed the, the process that we would like people to follow for how we want to solicit feedback for the white paper. And, um, uh, you know, basically uh, every two weeks we're going to be generating a PDF from our Google Docs working draft and, uh, and putting that on the wiki. And then uh, alongside of that is going to be a form <laughs> uh, that we're, we're going to ask people to, uh, that would like to provide feedback on the draft to kind of fill in their, uh, it's a template for, for providing feedback and then uh, that would be emailed uh, to the working group members. And then uh, we would be reviewing them and incorporating it in, into the, the next draft. So every two weeks we're gonna be posting a PDF um, alongside and, uh, and reviewing uh, people's feedback. And then, you know, we, we just started stepping through, going through the various uh, revision proposals that uh, the team had been made. And, you know, at the end, we just kind of went, talked about the process. Are we comfortable with it? We noted that, uh, you know, it's going to, it is going to take some time, but that's probably okay. Um, we, we uh, uh, in order to get everyone a chance to provide their suggestions and have enough uh, discussion around it to actually update, um, it's going to take a little bit of time, but the fact that we already are incubating now two projects, um, uh, isn't, it's not going to be holding back anyone. Uh, and also, it would be good to be able to, to the extent that, you know, as we're making progress on the requirements and, and working um, and use case groups and things like that, uh, we'll, and since members of our working group are also participating in there, we'll be able to get some of that feedback come in through those channels as well. And that's about it. Okay. Thanks, Dave. And Christopher. Yes. So immediately following um, the initial architecture meeting is uh, a, a uh, let's call it a boss for right now around identity. Uh, there are a lot of uh, issues in the identity area that uh, may or may not um, uh, fit neatly into uh, requirements or architecture, and we want to try to you know, have a further discussion about uh, you know, specific around you know, things like you know, token hardware, uh, different forms of authentication and authorization, privacy issues, uh, you know, selective disclosure, and other different things that are you know, very specific to a number of the, of the use cases that maybe are not exit to um, you know, this, the specific um, uh, architecture requirements. So uh, uh, that'll be the discussion. We'll decide at that point whether or not we want to formally make it a working group and have further meetings uh, 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 at that time. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> and last, actually, uh, we should be the continuous integration group. Um, uh, I haven't done anything there because we the, the first thing we need to do is have this meeting with Stephen and the uh, the Lynx Foundation infrastructures team to get the, the, the base tooling up and running the Garrett and figure out if it's Travis or Jenkins and so forth so um, uh, so we have I have an action to, to try and get that on the calendar for early next week and I will do that <clears throat> but I did have overwhelming response to that so now that we have two projects that <laughs> that's actually a good thing um, but they're, they're an awful lot, and so thank you for all of the all of those of you who did sign up for the CI work. Um, uh, it sounds like we'll have lots of help with that, so that's a good thing. Um, 
and that's really it. Unless anybody has anything else for the agenda, we can all get about 15 minutes back. <clears throat> Hearing no other agenda items, then uh, Todd, I think we're adjourned. Thanks, Thanks everyone. everyone.